Hi, my name is Sam Kreider, and I've done my project on the Kaihyogyo practice at Mount Hiei. Note that the majority of my work in this project comes from the article, The Kaihyogyo Practice of Mount Hiei by Robert Rhodes. Uh, I'm saying this now to avoid having to um, quote citations throughout my entire project. Now to start, the Kaihyogyo is an ascetic practice that takes place on Mount Hiei which is where Tendai Buddhism has its headquarters. Tendai Buddhism was founded in 806 CE by Denjio Daishi, also known as Saicho, and he built the first temple on Mount Hiei. He established two methods of training for Tendai monks, meditative practices and esoteric practices. My focus is on the latter curriculum, uh, which Saichi developed after interpreting the first 14 chapters of the Lotus Sutra uh, in terms of Tendai original enlightenment, which states that all sentient beings are uh, already partially awakened. This concept relies on non-dualism non -dualism, because if all things are empty and interconnected, then any barriers between the Buddha and other sentient beings are also negated. The spiritual lineage of the Kaihyogo started with Su Osho, who lived from 831 to 918 CE. He was a Tendai monk who spent many years secluded in ascetic practices on Mount Hiei. Su received insights on the deity Fudo Miu and decided to cultivate himself and focus on his practices until he could make Fudo Miu appear before him. To do this, Su traveled around Mount Hiei and other surrounding mountains performing rituals and meditating until after a thousand days, uh, Fudo Miu appeared to Su in a waterfall. And this caused Su to make a leap of faith into the waterfall and he ended up grabbing onto a log that he then enshrined. Su's ascetic practices on Mount Hiei eventually grew into the highly structured Kai Hyogo practice that we know of today. The Kyaihyogo's history is divided into four phases. First, Tendai ascetics took inspiration from Su and journeyed out into Mount Hiei and surrounding mountains, taking their own paths and performing austerities cut off from human contact. In the second phase, uh, these monks started making pilgrimages to the various halls on Mount Hiei, and there were up to about 40 sacred temples that these monks would make pilgrimages to. Uh, and these temples were in the regions known as the Three Pagodas, uh, which are like the various regions on Mount Hiei. And in order to become a Tendai priest, one must make all of these pilgrimages. Okay. And then during the third phase, the, uh, these pilgrimages became much more systematized. There were rules uh, for the type of clothing worn and what kind of equipment was brought and all the routes, like the pilgrimages, all the, all the routes were planned out in detail. The Kaihyogo, during the third phase, was structured as follows. Uh, the, practitioner would walk, the practitioner would walk for about 26 miles every day, and this practice would last for 700 days. And once the 700 days were completed, they must take part in, the ni in a nine-day fast at Mudoji. These practitioners had to also wear white robes and carry a cypress hat in their left arm, that was like wrapped in black leather and it was hung uh, from their elbow, from, sorry, from their elbow. Uh, furthermore, the, the practitioner must take part in a retreat in the Mayu Inn in Katsuragawa. Uh, and this retreat was held twice a year uh, at the time of the Lotus Flower Ceremony, which was in June, and the Lotus Sutra Ceremony, which was in October. During these nine day retreats, the, the practitioners were expected to eat only once a day and they got no sleep at all. 
and they had to recite the mantra to Fudo Mio 100,000 times during the retreats. And this whole cycle of the third phase is pretty similar to uh, current day, which we will discuss next. In the fourth phase, or today, the Kyahogo has two parts. The 100-day Kyahogo that all aspiring priests must complete, and the 1,000-day Kyahogo that's completed over seven years. I'm focused on the 1,000-day Kyahogo as its most extreme aesthetic, pra aesthetic practice I've ever come across. Uh, now to start talking about the 1,000-day Kyahogo, for the first three years, the practitioner walks 100 days of each year. In each of these days, they walk about 24 miles. And along their route, the practitioner recites mantras and offers prayers at about 300 various sites, temples, uh, and holy shrines. Now, during the fourth and fifth years, uh, this is increased to 200 days each year. And once the practitioner has walked a total of 700 days, then they must complete the Do'iri, which is a nine-day fast in the Mayudo Hall of Mudoji, uh, which is the starting temple of the Kai Hyogo. Uh, and in this fast, they cannot eat, they cannot drink, they cannot sleep, or even rest. This is a pivotal moment because it holds the greatest risk of death, because the human body can't survive without water past seven days. So this, I mean, this is what medical practitioners teach us. Clearly, these guys are doing it. So during the door, door iri, the, the practitioner also has to conduct a two hour service six times a day. And at all other times, he has to sit in one corner of the hall where he recites the mantra to Fudo Mio for a total of one million times during the entire seclusion. <laughs> Oh, and he's only allowed out of the hall once during each day. And this is at 2 o'clock in the morning when he has to go out to a well that's about 200 meters away and draw water. And because he's growing like progressively weaker each day, this like ritual trip to the well takes longer and longer each day. And by the ninth day, it could take him up to an hour and a half to make this short trip to go get water. Uh, and for a practitioner to even make it to this point in the journey where they do the nine day fast, they have to have done everything in the previous 700 uh, days perfectly, or else they would have been obligated to commit suicide because as part of their uniform, they have to carry a knife and a rope with them. Now, during the Kai Hyogo, weather is not a factor, nor is daylight as the practitioners usually start each day at about midnight and they complete each day no matter what the conditions are. As for what they wear, their attire, the practitioner wears an all white robe, which symbolizes death as they are prepared to die at any time during the Kai Hyogo. Uh, and the hat that they carry is thought to be Fudo Myo himself and is therefore like a sacred object. The practitioner, the practitioner can't even wear this hat until after he's completed the first 300 days. Uh, and then the sandals they wear are Waraji, Waraji uh, which symbolize the lotus petals that bodhisattvas and Buddhas walk on. <laughs> and these sandals are handmade and the, and the practitioner may go through like multiple pairs in one day depending on the conditions uh, like on the trail. So clearly these practitioners are not properly equipped for the massive journey that they're on, which is why, as I mentioned earlier, they carry the knife and the rope, which are used in case that they cannot continue their journey anymore. They have, they are obligated to kill themselves at that moment. And they do that using the knife and maybe the rope. Now, with all this said, there have only been around 40 monks who have completed the 1000 day Kai Hyogo. This practice is among one of the most representative forms of Tendai Buddhism that's being carried out on Mount Hiei today and it symbolizes like the fundamental aspect of the esoteric path in Tendai Buddhism.